Welcome to an EdTech Team video tutorial. This particular session, we are going to focus on using Google Slides to create holiday cards. I have to share with you that uh, my parents reached out to me, um, sharing with me some holiday cards that they wanted to put together to put on uh, all of our Christmas gifts that we're giving out to family. Now, I just recently went on a trip, and <laughs> so they decided that they would use my picture on top of a camel um, to put on all of the Christmas gifts. And this, of course, got me to laughing, but it also got me thinking, huh, what if we use Google Slides to actually create some really cool, fun um, uh, cards for the holiday? So, uh, so here we go. Um, in this particular section, we're going to talk about different things like being able to use the mask tool to crop your image into certain shapes, like in this example here where we set it up as a circle. We're gonna talk about moving objects uh, from the foreground to the background and, and really getting it to, to be set up the way that you want it to be set up. Um, we're also gonna talk about image options because sometimes the images we bring in aren't quite as clear or they're too dark or not light enough. Um, and of course, we're gonna be talking about text alignment. Um, there are some new features within Google Slides that allow you to actually bring your all of your text to be centered to each other, not just to the page itself. Um, so lots of cool things that we're gonna cover. So we're just gonna go ahead and dive in. All right, so I wanna share with you that this particular slide deck that you're gonna have access to already has all the graphics ready to go. So it's gonna be very, very easy for you to basically design what you see here on the screen. You're gonna be able to customize it with your picture as well as with your text. So let's get started. I'm gonna jump into this slide that doesn't have an image yet. And I'm gonna to go to, uh, to my Google Photos account. Um, where I've already pulled up uh, some photos ready to go. Um, so here's a picture of uh, my cousin's daughter. So I consider her my niece. Um, we're gonna use her in, uh, in, this, in this picture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on her image and it'll pop up here like this. And I'm simply gonna click and drag and you're gonna see me drag up to the top to the tab that has the Google slide deck that we're currently working in. Once it changes tabs over the way you saw it just happen from my Google Photo tab to now my Google Slides tab, I can now bring the image right back down into the slide, let it go, and it's going to drop it right into this particular slide. Now, this picture is pretty big, which is why it threw us off to the side there. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag the picture right back up into the slide and bring the slide back over into view. And I'm simply using my mouse to do this. Now, as you know here, Obviously, this picture is not a circle, and what we need it to be is a circle because we're trying to create this, right? We want to put it into a circle shape. So what we need to do is to crop this down, and, and I'm sure a lot of you know how to crop, right? We just simply select it, and by double-clicking, it automatically activates the crop tool. But this is still not the right shape. And so what I need to do is next to the crop tool, you're going to see that there's a drop down menu. And I need to click on that little drop down menu. It looks like a little uh, drop down um, that's a little triangle pointing downwards. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to select shapes from the drop down menu because I want to go ahead and select uh, a circle shape because that's what I need for this particular picture. But as you can see, there are lots of other shapes on here that you can select as well. So I'm going to get select circle. And it doesn't give you a circle, it gives you an ellipse. Um, and in this case, this wouldn't work, right? So we need to actually grab the corners um, to be able to then um, create the circle that we wanna create. So I'm just gonna grab them in and sort of eyeball it until I get the shape that I want. And now you're gonna have to tweak. I mean, this is just sort of a part of it. You're just gonna have to tweak and tweak and tweak until you get it exactly the way that you need it. All right, so oh, that's probably too much. That's getting closer to a circle. I can also use the arrow keys here to move it up and down. And in this case, I am gonna to need to move it up a little because I have a white border around that picture. So I have to move it up a little bit and that looks good there. So I'm gonna hit enter so that it takes effect. You can see that it still has some white up at the top. So I'm gonna to have to fix that by simply double clicking it. It pops that image right back open. And you'll notice that it didn't get rid of my picture in the background, it's just cropped down. So I still have that image available to me to be able to play with. Now in this particular case, there's too much white um, border around it and so I'm not quite grabbing everything I need. So I need to make this picture bigger. So I'm gonna grab it from the corner holding my shift key down 
Now I'm going to stretch that out just a little bit and now move it up so that I get just picture and no white border. And that's looking way better. And of course, we can actually adjust this to where we have more of her and then make this picture a lot bigger so that she fits completely in that circle. Now you always have to be careful to not go too big because that picture came in at the size that it was meant to come in. If you go too big, then it will start getting pixelated. But this still looks good, so we're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and there's our picture. Now all I need to do is drag over and then size it down, holding my shift key and, and selecting it from the corner. I'm gonna size it down, and let's uh, make an adjustment there. Okay, all right, that's looking really good. Now, if I hold my shift key down, I can nudge um, the movement. Instead of it jumping too much like this, like that's a big jump, I can hold my shift key down and it slightly nudges it in the direction that I'm moving it using my arrow keys on my keyboard. And that's quite nice because it doesn't do the big, big, large jump. So that's looking really good there. And I really like this. Um, it's, 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 fitting in really well as if it was designed that way. Now, if you notice on this example that I already have here, I have a white border and I, I purposely added the white border because it helps the picture pop out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and select her once again. And we're gonna come up here to the top. And we're gonna select from the border width. We're gonna give it eh, about a four point border. And of course we don't want that to be black. We wanna give it a white so that it helps it pop. And once we have that, voila. So now you can see it's really popping out at us. So it's that simple to be able to crop down what started off as a square size picture down to now a circle. So this worked out really well. We're gonna move on to the next example. The next one, uh, we're gonna focus more on um, the alignment, okay? And in the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and take the same picture, but it's the same concept how we brought in this picture here um, in this example, right? We want that circle, we wanna put it in into that frame. The problem is, is that you already have some graphics in here, right? And this right now, if we put it in the circle, it's gonna fall on top of that, the graphic work that is there. So we need to actually realign some of this, um, some of this content here. The other thing too is I wanna get rid of that border for this one. So we're gonna to go to, in the color, to transparent and it just completely gets rid of it. We also need to scale it. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale it up a little bit because this circular area is definitely bigger than, uh, than the previous picture. So I'm just gonna adjust it using, again, my shift key down anytime I pull on the edges there to make sure that it keeps the dimension. Because uh, if you don't hold it down or if you pull it from the corners, that's when you get that really awful stretch that you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. And you don't want to do that. So hold down the shift key and grab it from the corners to keep the dimensions intact. All right. So here we got our photo. It looks pretty good. It looks like it, uh, it fits really well in there, except that the graphics are getting covered by the image. And we don't want that. We, we need to reverse the order. So I'm going to go ahead and select the graphic, which is this right here. It's got the little um, penguins and then the circle and the text. And all I'm going to do is select it and then right click. And I'm going to go to order and say bring to front because we want this text to be in front. And now you can see that the text that uh, we were looking at before that was in the back is now where it needs to be. Now, if I want to move the picture and if I try moving it from here, it's no longer the item that's selected in the front because now we have our graphic in the front. So I'd have to uh, just do a quick undo so that I have my picture again in the front and then I can make my adjustments as needed. Um, so just be aware of that. Once you put something on top of something else, you cannot select what's below it unless you move it out of the way or send it to the back so that you can then um, grab your picture once again. I did see something that really bugged me. Uh, and that's that it still had a little bit of white space up at the top. So I'm just going to fix that really quick. And we're going to go ahead and bring that image once again, order, bring to front, and there we go. Now you can make adjustments here. Obviously, if you wanted to make her a little bit smaller so that her eye wouldn't be cut off and so forth, there's definitely some tweaking that still can be done to make this look even better. Um, but there you go. You get the idea in how to be able to order things by pushing them to the front or to the back. All right, of course, you're gonna be able to customize your text, but we're gonna talk about text here in a little bit. Meanwhile, we're gonna jump over to our next example. 
So here we have uh, another, another design. And in this case, we've been able to bring in a photo to fill up majority of the background. So what you're gonna have as your template is this here, and you have things layered. So you've got your snowflakes on one layer, you've got your um, snowman on another layer, and then you've got your text on another layer. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to be able to drop in that photograph between multiple layers. So we have our background, then we can add our picture, and then our snowflakes, snowman, and text actually go in front. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our photos and we're gonna take the very same photo just to keep it simple. Once again, I'm gonna click, drag up into my slide and then bring it right back down and let it go. Once again, it's a big picture, so it's gonna drop it over to the side. We're gonna drag it back in. And I'm simply gonna right click, order, and then send to back. So we just talked about the order of things and we need to send this one to the back because um, we want, of course, the snowman and all of this stuff in front. As you can see, it doesn't consume the entire screen, and this looks, it doesn't look right, right? We need to adjust this. So I'm gonna double click on my photo, and I'm definitely gonna crop out the white frame, because I don't want that white frame. And I only need to do the top and the sides. The bottom doesn't matter because it's behind the graphics that you see there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it over using my arrow keys. And again, my shift key down to make those small little uh, nudges as opposed to a big jump. All right, and then I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. Now, again, remember to be really careful with the stretching because if you stretch too far or too much, it's gonna make your picture look pretty bad. Now I need to crop from the bottom so that I have more space to stretch this. If, if I don't crop, then I, I don't have enough space to stretch it all the way to the corner, which is what you see me doing now. There we go. All right, as you can see, this doesn't quite work because of where the baby is positioned in this image. You can see the snowman falls on top of her face and obviously that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna show you a quick little trick and this sometimes work, works and this sometimes doesn't work. So let's see if it's gonna work for us here. I'm gonna right click over my picture and my menu popped up to the edge there. So let's do it on this side. So right click over um, your picture and you're gonna see that you have some different uh, options here for, um, for your picture. And I'm going to rotate. Now we don't wanna rotate the picture to left, right or upside down but instead we want to flip horizontally. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna shift the baby to the other side and then the empty space that you see in, in the background to the other side. So it's gonna flip it for us and let's see if that works. So let's flip horizontal. And you see now that she's over on this side, which actually works in our favor. We of course have to go back in and adjust so that she appears over on this side. And of course we now have to come in and crop the picture accordingly. But you see how a picture that we brought in that wasn't working all of a sudden works because we just simply flipped it. Now I want to share with you word of caution if there is text like you see up here, it's now backwards. So you have to be really careful with that. In our case, we don't even need that part of the, of the picture. So I don't even have to worry about it. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this because it's not gonna work as it currently is. So let's go ahead and crop this little guy in. Went too far there, let's go to the edge. Bring this up at the bottom and grab the corner holding, once again, my shift key down and all the way to the edge. Not quite where we want it because it's cutting her off just a little bit. Let me go ahead and grab that picture again. We need it right around there. So I still need to crop that picture down a little bit. It's too much, so we're gonna pull it right back up just a tad bit, and then we're gonna be done with this one. Okay, there is our picture baby's first Christmas. The text is, of course, customizable, so you can actually adjust that. So pretty good. So a couple of things that we learned here um, was one, uh, being able to bring the picture, um, put it in the back the way you saw us do, and then using the very same feature we saw earlier in regards to um, uh, order, right? And then we went into rotate and we flipped it horizontally. One additional thing I wanna share with you here is image options. If your image comes in and it's not 
bright enough, you have the ability to add brightness. In this case, this image is already bright enough, so we wouldn't have to do that. You also have the contrast uh, feature here, where you can use a slider to add or, or reduce the amount of contrast. And you also have transparency if you needed to actually make that lighter and allow some of that background to come through. We're gonna reset it because this picture is good as is. But you know you have those image options and you can also recolor in case you wanted to turn that into maybe a black and white photo or maybe just have some fun with some of these other colors. All right, so moving on to the last thing that we wanna look at and that's aligning text. Now for here we already have a picture. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about that part. What we're gonna look at is our text. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take our text here, and I'm gonna bring it over into a blank canvas because I wanna show you something. So let's say we're typing in our text and uh, we put in maybe some names. I'm gonna put my name, uh, my niece's name, and my brother's name. That is who is in the picture um, before it. As you're typing information, as you're typing uh, text and adding text, the text, et cetera, you can line up your text boxes, but sometimes they don't line up perfectly. So I wanna show you a quick little trick here. So we're gonna go ahead and select all of our text. Once I have all three, because these were separate text boxes, I'm going to right click. And from here, I wanna show you that you can actually work specifically on just text. So I'm gonna to go to align horizontally, and you'll see that I have as an option to center. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take all three text boxes and make sure that all of them are aligned to center because that's what I'm selecting, but you have the left and the right options. But I'm gonna select center. And so all of my text I know now is perfectly centered to each other. Before really what we had was to center just based off of the page, the, the entire page, but now you can center to each other. And I love that, that new feature because before you'd have to sort of eyeball it, now you know it's perfectly centered. The other thing I like to do is to use the group feature. If I group this, now all of these three items are grouped together. And so if I need to move them, I select it, and then I can actually move the whole thing around uh, as opposed to just uh, individual boxes. And there I clicked on the individual box. But if you grab it from the outside, I keep doing the same thing. If you grab it from the outside, you can actually move the whole thing. And my demo here on moving this box is just not, it's not happening. But what you can do is, is, is basically select one, uh, you select it once and, and then you're able to move the whole thing. Again, I'm doing a terrible job at demoing this. It is not cooperating. It keeps wanting to take one thing out. Um, but normally this would work really well. It is not happening. Um, but it's all grouped, so whenever you do select items, multiple items, there we go. When you select multiple items like that, it will move the whole thing for you. Um, and that's really nice because you're not having to realign, realign, and realign. So that, uh, that tip has been really useful uh, for me, so I thought I'd share that with you guys. All right, so that was, uh, that was four different tips. Mask so that you can crop your, your pictures down to the shape that you want. Moving objects into uh, into the order that you prefer, so moving objects forwards or backwards, etc. We also talked about some image options and also being able to flip your image the way we did there. And lastly, uh, aligning your text and grouping your text so that you can move objects around and making sure that your text is aligned perfectly. So. Now, for the final steps here, um, the idea is that you guys give this a go. You have some templates in here that you can play with, customize, make your own, add your own pictures. You have several in here. You're gonna have this template, and this one, and this one, and all of these blank, no pictures in it with customizable text ready for you to have some fun and, uh, and customize them the way that you want to. Our challenge for you, once you actually go in here and make your own, is for you to actually share. So we want you to make a copy of this template, design your card, share on social media, and tag us. We wanna see your creations. So design at your heart's desire, create some fun holiday cards, share them with us, we can't wait to see them.